friends, it is with a heavy heart that I must inform you that Stephen Moffat is back at it again with the sexism. Yes, um, this is a Stephen Moffat video. I'm sorry <laughs> that I'm making this. I didn't want to make this. You know I've made my peace with Stephen Moffat. We've had a rocky relationship, the two of us. Um, I used to be very critical of Stephen Moffat. I used to... Actually, okay, I started off loving him. Back when Russell G Davies was showrunner and Stephen Moffat was writing one-off Doctor Who episodes, I used to really look forward to his episodes and think he was fantastic, and I still think that his episode, Blink, is one of the best Doctor Who stories of the modern era. So, you know, I, I do have, like, respect for him in that sense. Like, he's done some good things. Then he took over as showrunner, and I suddenly started to realise, oh, okay, maybe he's a writer who's better suited to writing within the sort of the confines and the structure of someone else, someone else who can kind of be like, oh, Stephen, Stephen, that's a bit sexist. Let's just rub that bit out, shall we, and change that. So yeah, he kind of like ran wild with his series and I've spoken a lot about how I feel it has sexist undertones and it's not as progressive as it could be. And his writing of The Doctor, I've spoken about that at length. Um, I'll put the links to those videos I made a long time ago, I should add. I, I look and sound very different. Um, I'll put them in the description box. But my relationship with Stephen Moffat has changed because I really feel like his last series, pretty much his whole time with 12 is the Doctor, I've thought was, was pretty good. And I've spoken about it as like Moffat's redemption arc <laughs> as a writer. Like I feel like the Doctor has returned to the character he should be, like a sort of grandfatherly figure, showing more respect. Um, Stephen Moffat wrote us Bill, who was the first canon main LGBT companion. I know that we all pretty much know that Ace was LGBT, but it was never specifically canon, so I'm not counting her, although we all know she is. And we also, we all know that Clara was bi, like the bi-fi was going off there. But he did give us Bill, and she was and is a lesbian woman of colour, and that meant a great deal. Like, I've spoken about that as well. I think that's amazing for kids to see. I think that's just when I think about my little self, if I'd had a role model like Bill, I would have been so much more comfortable with my sexuality and I think it would have saved me a lot of pain and heartache. But like I said, he is back at it again. He, um... <laughs> I had made my peace with Moffat. And I should say before I go any further, when, I, when I'm talking about Moffat, um, and I, I call it Moffat hate, but I, I have no hatred for the man himself. I'm talking about his writing. I don't know him as a person. Um, the reason why it's called Moffat Hate on <laughs> in the sort of Doctor Who community, it started from a tagging system on Tumblr. So if you were going to criticise Stephen Moffat's writing or, or do like a critique, you'd put Moffat Hate as a courtesy in the tags so that people who didn't want to see it could block that and not have to read it. So it's not actually hating Stephen Moffat like in a really horrible sense. It's like a courtesy thing and that's that's what's happened. I should clarify that because I don't know him as a man. He might be a nice person in real life. I've got no idea. So to the point of this video, Stephen Moffat's last episode is going to air on Christmas Day and I I am and was looking forward to it very much because it's going to be a two doctor story. So we're going to have the first doctor played by David Bradley um, meeting the 12th Doctor, played by Peter Capaldi, and this is huge. Multi-Doctor stories are amazing. I, I've expressed some displeasure before on this channel that during the Doctor Who 50th, they didn't make the most, or Stephen Moffat didn't really make the most of the fact that we still have loads of the actors who played the Doctor, and they weren't really used in the story. Like, there were lots of ways that they could have um, shown respect to those actors and, and made a real a real fun celebratory event of the 50th and instead it felt more like some sort of blockbuster movie which was more about Stephen Moffat's vision than looking back on the past and appreciating it which I think judging by a lot of the feedback a lot of the fans felt a bit disappointed by. Obviously got, we got the Five-ish Doctors, the little um, funny comedy documentary sketch written by Peter Davison with Colin Baker and Sir Weston McCoy and Paul McGann and David Tennant was in it and that was lovely and I will forever feel really grateful to him for that because that was what the fans wanted really. It, does, it didn't matter if it was like big and bold and all oh, the CGI, oh it's all kicking off with the fireworks and the explosives, like people just wanted to appreciate Doctor Who after 50 years and I, I will always feel really irritated that Stephen Moffat took his own vision and decided that was the time, <laughs> that was the time to push it and to the extent that he even put a new Doctor in the canon and totally ignored the fact that we had Paul McGann, who God is, is preserving, I'm sure of it, that God is preserving him 
so that he can play the Doctor again. <laughs> yeah, we only had him for a prequel. And uh, I admit that was exciting and wonderful because we got eight back, but he was right there. Surely he could have taken the place of the War Doctor or even joined the group. I don't know why that was. That will forever haunt me because I still feel like Paul McGann... Someone needs to get Paul McGann back. With Jodie Whittaker's 13th Doctor, I have a vision of like a two doctor story with her and eight because I think they'd be amazing that's what I truly truly want in my life anyway so we've got this Christmas two doctor story with the first doctor and the twelfth doctor and I love the first doctor I have a real soft spot in my heart for him especially since watching um, An Adventure in Space and Time which was written by Mark Gatiss which I thought was really great that was around the 50th as well and it actually kind of it was a, a TV drama based around the making of Doctor Who so the people who made the show and about William Hartnell himself um I thought that was really amazing I really really loved that that for me that was the 50th that and the five-ish doctors and the prequel with uh, the eighth doctor that was my 50th so I was really really looking forward to this um I also kind of was looking forward to it because it's Moffat's last episode and again he's done he's done some good things for the show you may feel differently about this to me and that's fine we all have our different opinions I have not enjoyed Moffat on the whole as a showrunner so I'm very much looking forward to Chris Chibnall getting on board and seeing what he does with the 13th Doctor but yeah it was a bit of a celebration <laughs> I was thinking yay it's, it's Moffat's last episode also we get the first Doctor hooray um I didn't think that Stephen Moffat could get his paws on the franchise again and bring it down but unfortunately I really feel like he has. Dan sent me this yesterday. Dan is my brother, he's a big Doctor Who fan, major Doctor Who fan, um, and he sent me this. Now let me read you <laughs> this little extract from, it's the Radio Times, it's an article, Stephen Moffat unveils his final Doctor Who episode uh, and reveals why Carey Mulligan said no to the TARDIS. That bit's kind of irrelevant, but this is a quote from him about what he's doing for his last episode of Doctor Who. There's a tradition of the Doctors being funny when they get together. When Doctors meet, it's a laugh. And I suppose, at the back of my mind, I've known for ages the next Doctor was going to be a woman, although I didn't know which woman. So I was thinking, why does he subconsciously make that choice? Maybe seeing the whole span of his life as a man, seeing himself as the Hartnell Doctor, might make him think maybe it's time to be a bit more progressive. Looking at how the first Doctor was, he's hilariously not progressive. Without being too outrageous, I think we have recreated that version of Hartnell's Doctor with all the 1960s political incorrectness in place. At the same time, the original Doctor has a lot of fun at the expense of the modern one's sonic glasses and electric guitar. There's something funny about the 12th Doctor realising that he came from this politically incorrect, funny old man. This is who he was. Now friends, now friends. <laughs> Before we go further with this, right, so there's another extract I want to read you here. Now I cannot source this. This has been going around Twitter so if anyone can source this I'll be really really grateful but you need to know that I'm not sure where this comes from. I have hunted but it is making the rounds on Twitter. I think it is real. It seems real. Let me read you this next extract about <laughs> this writing for the first Doctor. It was fun because these two different generation, Hartnell's Doctor came from a time which wasn't so let's say PC and he comes in and he brings all that 90s 60s gentle chauvinism. Pearl Mackie came back you know and she says oh I've missed you I've missed you so much. Her and Peter's doctor are reunited and my doctor says well my dear I think he's missed you too this spaceship is a little bit dusty it just needs a bit of a spring clean and Peter's 12th doctor says no 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 you can't say that you can't do that why not why not and you know the first Doctor comes from that sort of era. There's a few little clashes in terms of these things that pop up now and again during the show, which makes you realise those 50 years made quite a difference in attitude, because he's from that time, and he's bringing all this into the scenes. It doesn't provide a big conflict, but just the difference of ideas. I hope it's as funny as it looked on paper. So... <laughs> Dan and I joked about this. Let's, let's, let me make this clear. We had a little joke between ourselves. We used to laugh and discuss how Stephen Moffat would write all the previous Doctors. Um, and we knew this was coming, and it was a joke, it was funny. We thought, oh, he'll, he'll write him as like a racist, sexist little old man, like for laughs. And it was funny until that actually seems to be what Stephen Moffat plans to do. 
So that second extract sounds like David Bradley talking in an interview. Again, I can't find it for some reason, so if anyone can find the source for that, I'd be really grateful. Um, I don't know where to start, but I'm dreading this Christmas episode now because I'm... I'm <laughs> I didn't think Stephen Moffat could do this anymore. I thought it's... it's he's finished now, you know, it's done. He's he's already got his hands all over the 50th and I'll forever have to have to just make my peace with that. But it's okay because he's going. But before he goes, he's going to drag one down with him into the flames. Um, apparently he's writing some sort of comedy... comedy element in which for some reason he's writing the first Doctor who is actually, you know, an alien, a Time Lord who can travel through time with the attitudes of a sexist old man from the 60s. <laughs> oh no! Why? Why? Okay, so I've, I've made posts about this. Um, it's so frustrating. Like, for example, this, this is a quote here, so the gentle chauvinism thing. I think this might be a David Bradley quote, I'm not sure. This is, this is why it's so off the mark and something which I feel has been so off the mark with so much of Moffat's writing. It really feels clear that he's writing for men and boys when he writes because to a general... This is, this is something that a lot of... some male writers don't understand. Sexism, like gentle chauvinism, is not funny if you're a woman watching it. Like, it's, it's not amusing. It might be funny to, to certain men watching it, although I, I don't really think that... <laughs> You know, the really good men out there would find that funny. It's not something which is funny, it's it's demeaning. Even if it's just played as a joke, it kind of feels worse, it's alienating. It's not nice for for female viewers. So I don't think very many of the viewership, like about 50% of the viewership, is going to be sitting there on Christmas Day <laughs> chuckling at the first Doctor's gentle chauvinism. Oh, bless his heart, he's, he's just a little bit sexist, but we love him. That is our hero. That's the Doctor, that's the first Doctor. He's not a man from the 60s, he is a Time Lord. He... I just... oh god. Now let's not get started on the fact that... I mean there are so many issues here. It, it sounds like, from this extract, it sounds like the worst possible scenario has happened. I don't think I could imagine it worse. When the first Doctor meets Bill, only the second um, main uh, person of colour as a companion here, woman of colour as a companion, he asks her to clean the TARDIS. So not only is that sexist, that comes with a whole host of issues in terms of racism because let's not forget that Martha had a storyline um, in Human Nature and the Family of Blood where she had to basically uh, be a cleaner and, and work for some really racist white people and that was, you know, disturbing to watch. Like, I'm not sure if that was the right thing to do, there's, there's debate about that. I'm not a black woman so it's not really my debate to have but yeah there is there is a theme going on here and it just feels so unnecessary like is is that supposed to be funny in, in Stephen Moffat's head now I know we haven't seen the episode yet I know this it might not be as bad on screen but even just the idea of it it's not funny <laughs> it's just not funny in any sense why would that be funny to watch do you think that's going to be funny for like young black girls watching that like oh our hero the doctor oh oh he he just asked us to to clean the TARDIS that's not funny it's horrible so I did make a post about this online I'm just trying to like sort out my thoughts for this video actually but there are like five main reasons why this doesn't really work and <laughs> why it's so frustrating so number one is obviously that the doctor is not a man from the 60s William Hartnell was a man from the 60s yeah but the first doctor is not a man from the 60s. That was the period in which the show was made, yes. That's not who he was or is, you know. He's still a Time Lord who can travel through time, so why would he have the attitudes of the 60s? Number two, like I've said, it's not funny. Like, sexism is a joke is not really that funny to women watching. It's not funny at all, it's just a reminder that, oh, <laughs> oh, there used to be a lot of sexism and <laughs> people who didn't think we were worth as much as men. <laughs> Hilarious. Some people are still laughing at that now. <laughs> I guess it's, guess it's funny to you guys. <laughs> it's just uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable and unnecessary and only a man would write that <laughs> as a joke because it's not funny. Number three. Yes, okay, so if we look back at the first Doctor's tenure as the Doctor, um, we can definitely see some 60s attitudes in the show, but the character himself was never really written to be politically incorrect. Like, at the time, for the time the show was, was broadcast, it was trying to be progressive. So the idea for the character was to make him this, this alien that, that travelled around and wouldn't have had those attitudes. So 
yes, I can understand us looking back, it's a show made in the 60s, it's going to have some of those prejudices, but that's not something which is inherent to the character and that's important to the character, so it feels like a real disservice to what they were trying to achieve there. Number four, even if that was a part of the character, say that the first Doctor had been horrendously un-PC at the time, that's not, like I said, an integral part to his character. That's not important to bring to him in 2017. You're bringing this Doctor to a new audience. You're bringing this hero figure, because all the Doctors are hero figures in my eyes. Yeah, they're flawed, like, we can talk about that, like, they're good and bad, but essentially the Doctor is the hero of the show. Why is that something you want to draw attention to and, and make some sort of funny joke? Like, that's, why would you do that in 2017? It's unnecessary. And number five, I think, it, again, it just, it just smacks of Moffat's inability to understand that he's the caretaker. It's not his show. Like, surely if you're taking over a show, like, it, he didn't write this show. When it comes to Sherlock, I forgive him more because I know he didn't write the source material, but it is his vision of the show, so he can do more what he wants with it. Like, I get that. You know, it's, it's his adap adaptation. Sorry, guys, I had to answer the door. But yeah, this is not Stephen Moffat's show. It's something which is a huge honour and so many writers would, would want the chance to do. Like, it's taking over a show which has such a rich history that should be respected and built upon like every showrunner you know builds upon that and gives their own spin and moves it forward slightly but I don't like Stephen Moffat's attitude toward you know, the way he goes back into it and puts his own ideas in just feels to me disrespectful that's my opinion but that's how it feels <laughs> it doesn't feel it kind of feels like he's overstepping the mark a bit there now another issue i have here yes i know i'm going on i know i'm going on let me vent like it's my youtube channel i have to get this out okay <laughs> i'm a huge hoovy and i need to vent somewhere to people who will understand so this idea of the doctor here's here's the quote actually in the back of my mind i've known for ages the next doctor was going to be a woman although i didn't know which woman so i was thinking why does he subconsciously make that choice? Maybe seeing the whole span of his life as a man, seeing himself as the Hartnell Doctor, might make him think that maybe it's time to be a bit more progressive. Now for me, this is blurring the view of the writer and our society with the character. Because for us, yeah, I mean, we still have people who have an issue with the Doctor being played by a woman, which is really depressing, but we do still have that. And we finally got to a time where people are pushing for that and the majority of the audience feel comfortable with that, thank goodness, and are really looking forward to Jodie Whittaker as 13. And that's that's amazing to be at this point in Doctor Who. To be a Doctor Who fan right now and to be a woman is just, it's amazing. But I don't think that the Doctor's thought process would be, oh, time to be a bit more progressive, I'll be a woman. That's kind of making it almost, oh, the only reason the Doctor's a woman now is because it's time, it's PC to do it. Really, shouldn't it just be, like, the Doctor wouldn't think like that, surely. The Doctor is an alien that can regenerate into any form. <laughs> I don't think the Doctor's thinking, oh, how can I be more politically correct? Oh, I'll, I'll be a woman. Like, th that kind of cheapens it in a way, doesn't it? It feels like, it feels like the first doctor played by a woman is almost a token and that's a criticism loads of people who don't like the idea of had and it feels like it's playing into that rather than the fact that why shouldn't the doctor be a woman you know the doctor can regenerate into anybody it shouldn't be like oh the doctor makes a decision oh i, I guess i should be a woman now that just disturbed that that just bothers me and annoys me now, this is why i'm glad we don't have moffat writing the first female doctor because I feel like it's not something which should be a huge deal to the Doctor. Um, and I feel like if Steve Moffat were to write it, it would be. The Doctor would be acting like, oh, it's this weird and weird thing. Like, oh, I I've got boobs now. <laughs> How hilarious. Um, whereas to the Doctor, it wouldn't be. Like, the Doctor would just accept it. Obviously there'd be struggles in terms of the time period the Doctor went to and how the Doctor was treated by people. That's sort of where the issue would come up and where it's a great idea for it to come up, you know, in terms of, of teaching people about history and, and attitudes and how they've changed. But it's not the Doctor themselves who would be having that issue, you know? The Doctor wouldn't see it as a huge deal. The Doctor's a Time Lord. <laughs> The Doctor wouldn't think it was this like, oh hilarious, I'm a lady. Oh god. I mean, we got a taste of that when River regenerated. When River regenerated into Alex Kingston's River, we got River rushing off to check her dress size and she was constantly sort of caressing her body and it was just sort of a bit... a bit odd, wasn't it? <laughs> really odd let's be real now one more thing and I, I wasn't going to even talk about this but i was looking for articles on this to talk to you about and i saw another 
thing to do with Stephen Moffat, and I don't want to sit here dragging Stephen Moffat, it's, it's just... but I kind of am. <laughs> I know I am, but I, I mean no ill will to him personally, as a person, I should make that really clear at all. But there was this article I found, and it's quite recent, it's from two days ago, no, yesterday this article po was posted, Stephen Moffat quote, Doctor Who is not just for progressive liberals, it's for brec Brexit voters too. I mean, I guess so, fair enough. Um, it's for general viewers, it's for everyone to enjoy, I agree. But in this interview he was giving, Stephen Moffat talks about why he didn't cast a woman as the Doctor before. Um, and it's a bit odd, really. Um, he, 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 listen, this is the quote. We could have replaced Matt Smith with a woman, given that his Doctor was more sexless and less of a lad. But then I got obsessed with seeing Peter in the TARDIS. I totally understand, you know, having an actor, you would like to play the Doctor, I get that. I really don't think Stephen Moffat wrote Eleven as sexless and less of a lad. Personally, I think Eleven has been the most... <laughs> He's, he was such a lad. He was kind of... There were times when he was written almost like a sort of Bond figure. It was just... It was weird. I've spoken about that before, but... There was a lot of, of sexual undertones with that Doctor, which just felt really uncomfortable to me. Stephen Moffat says he supports the casting of Whittaker, as, as he should. Um, and he made this quote, This isn't a show exclusively for progressive liberals. This is also for people who voted Brexit. That's not me politically at all. But we have to keep everyone on board. Now, this is the issue I have, and this is the attitude which really bugs me. Um, and it comes... This is about representation in TV shows in general. Not just about Doctor Who. I don't really like the idea that a progressive show like Doctor Who would be pandering to sexists. You know? It, it shouldn't be. Ooh, sexists won't like this, so maybe we shouldn't do it. Shouldn't the attitude be, well, look, we don't really want these sexists to be part of our viewership anyway. The Doctor as a character, Doctor Who has always been trying to be progressive. I don't like the idea of Doctor Who as a show, like, waiting for that time. Like, for me, Doctor Who as a show should be pushing the boundaries. I know that when Rusty Davies was showrunner, I'm not saying his, his time as showrunner was perfect or anything like that, but he really pushed the boat out in terms of LGBT stuff. In that respect, I think his era really did push the show forward. I mean, to the extent that people used to say he had a gay agenda, really, I think he just used to show gay characters and normalise LGBT people. Seeing that in Doctor Who helped me in my own life. So he did push the show forward and that, that carries on to this day, although Stephen Moffat did kind of pull it back a bit at times, take us back a few steps there. But on the whole, I mean, that's in Doctor Who canon now, that's in Doctor Who lore, so he's he pushed that forward in his own way. I don't like this idea of, oh, we have to wait till it's time, and oh, oh, I don't know if, I don't know if sexists would like a, a female Doctor, maybe we shouldn't upset the sexist because we want the sexist to enjoy it, <laughs> shouldn't the attitude be, maybe this is why I'm not a showrunner of a show, but why would you want to pander to those sorts of people? Like, why would you do that? What does it matter what sexists think? It's not like this is a character that was always written as, as male. Like, I can understand, for example, this is totally going off on a tangent, but, you know, people saying, oh, what's next, Jane Bond? <laughs> like, making James Bond a woman. And I can see the criticism there. I can understand that more because James Bond is a fictional character, but he is a man. Okay. Fair enough, he's written as a man. But the Doctor isn't a man. The Doctor is an alien, and the whole thing that's special about the Doctor, one of the things that's special about the Doctor, is that they change their entire being and their entire form when they regenerate. So I just don't even see why that's an issue and why, the, why they were thinking, oh, we need to wait for the audience to be ready for a female Doctor. That's just ridiculous, isn't it? So anyway, that's the end of my video. Um, Tell me what you think in the comments. I know that some of you who watch this are far bigger fans of Moffat than I am, which isn't hard, but um, I totally respect that and I, I get that there are different opinions on this. This is just my opinion on the issue and you know I come to this with a, a standpoint which comes from my life experience, as we all do. I am a woman, I'm a feminist, I'm a, I am half Indian, so the, you know, and I'm bisexual, so I do that's how I see the world, that's how I interpret media. You might think differently, you might come from a different walk of life, I completely understand and respect that. So please tell me what you think in the comment section. Um, I personally, <laughs> I'm kind of looking forward to the Christmas episode because I'm going to find it hilarious, um, because I'm going to make a review with Dan, and it seems to be everything that we were dreading. <laughs> 
coming to pass. So that should be interesting. However, I did, I do love David Bradley as an actor, and I think he'll do a great job of playing one. So I am looking forward to it as well. I'm looking forward to seeing Bill again. I think Peter Capaldi is, is fantastic as 12. I am looking forward to it. I don't want to be completely down on it, but I am sort of thinking, oh God, please don't hurt the memory of one too badly before you go, Stephen. Please! It's nothing sacred anymore. Anyway, I love you loads. I'm gonna go now. I've got driving lessons. So, tell me what you think. Merry Christmas, friends. <laughs> Enjoy the gentle chauvinism of endearing Stephen Moffat's version of one. Oh, what a take on the character. I'm so excited. Right, I love you loads, and I'll see you really soon. Bye.